you'll often need to work on the contents of compressed files. One option is to first uncompress the file as you normally would and work directly on the decompressed version. A downside of that approach is when you're dealing with large files, the process of uncompressing and then recompressing when you're finished can take some time. Instead, it's sometimes possible to uncompress the contents just long enough to work on them without writing them to a file. Commands you're most likely to use for this include unzip, gunzip, or bunzip2, each with a dash c argument, or zcat, and you'll likely use any of these in combination with the pipe operator. In case you want to download them to follow along, the example files I'll use here are available from the link pasted in a comment pinned to this video. Those files include one that was compressed with a zip command and another that represents gzip compression. Let's start by working on the zip file. First, just to clarify, you can't work directly on a compressed file. For example, if I try to use less to view the contents of this zip file, I first get a message warning that it's a binary file. This is the computer's way of telling me there's probably no sense in trying to open it because it's not something I can interpret. If I press Y to go ahead anyway, we can see the contents of the file and understand why the computer questioned whether I really wanted to do this. So, let's say we wanted to view the first few lines of that file in a format we can actually understand. As we saw in the video on compressing and archiving files, since it's a zip file, we could use the unzip command to create a new uncompressed version and then run the head command on that uncompressed file. However, there's an argument within unzip, dash c, that causes unzip to write the decompressed contents to the screen instead of to a new file, leaving the original zipped file unaffected. Now, printing to the contents of a zip file to the screen is rarely useful but we can take advantage of the pipe operator to redirect those decompressed contents into the command we want to use, in this case, head. Here, the contents were uncompressed, sent to the head command, and we get the output we want, with a small exception that two of the 10 lines printed by head were actually taken up by messages printed by the unzip command. Just to clean that up, we can run it again and add the dash Q argument, which stands for quiet to tell unzip not to print these messages to the screen, and then we get the first 10 lines of the file. Note here that there was no effect on the example.zip file. It's still zipped, and no unzipped version was created. Passing the dash C argument to gunzip has the same effect on a gzip file. And likewise, bunzip 2 c works on a bz2 file. Unlike unzip, the gunzip command doesn't print messages to the screen by default, so there's no need to include the dash q argument here. A more widely used alternative to the gunzip dash c command is zcat, or in, on some systems, gzcat, which have the same function as gunzip dash c. zcat or gzcat should always work with gzip files, and from my experience, it's hit or miss with zip files. Whether it works on these or not seems to be platform dependent. Getting comfortable with some of these methods for uncompressing a file on the fly can save you a lot of time repeatedly waiting for large files to uncompress and recompress when working with them at command line. 